February 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 14 from the New Testament. Now one Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a leader of the Pharisees, they were watching him closely. There, right in front of him, was a man suffering from dropsy. So Jesus asked the experts in religious law and the Pharisees, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So Jesus took hold of the man, healed him, and sent him away. Then he said to them, Which of you, if you have a son or an ox that had fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, would not immediately pull him out? But they could not reply to this. Then when Jesus noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. He said to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor because a person more distinguished than you may have been invited by your host. So the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this man your place. Then ashamed you will begin to move to the least important place. But when you are invited, go and take the least important place, so that when your host approaches, he will say to you, Friend, move up here to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who share the meal with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, when you host a dinner or a banquet, don't invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors so you can be invited by them in return and get repaid. But when you host an elaborate meal, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, then you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When one of those at the meal with Jesus heard this, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will feast in the kingdom of God. But Jesus said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time for the banquet, he sent his slave to tell those who had been invited, Come, because everything is now ready. But one after another, they all began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another says, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going out to examine them. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, and I cannot come. So the slave came back and reported this to his master. Then the master of the household was furious and said to his slave, Go out quickly to the streets and alleys of the city and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Then the slave said, Sir, what you have instructed has been done, and there is still room. So the master said to his slave, Go out to the highways and country roads and urge people to come in so that my house will be filled. For I tell you, not one of these individuals who were invited will taste my banquet. Now large crowds were accompanying Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you wanting to build a tower doesn't sit down first and compute the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish the tower, all who see it will begin to make fun of him. They will say, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to confront another king in battle, will not sit down first and determine whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000. If he cannot succeed, he will send a representative while the other is still a long way off and ask for terms of peace. In the same way, therefore, not one of you can be my disciple if he does not renounce all his own possessions. Salt is good, but if salt loses its flavor, how can its flavor be restored? It is of no value for the soil or for the manure pile. It is to be thrown out. The one who has ears to hear had better listen. God, I think the ending of this chapter is really interesting where you talk about that salt is good, but if salt loses its flavor, how can its flavor be restored? And I've heard this preached about in so many different ways and Uh, taught in so many different ways but I think about 
some of the situations I've gone through, especially recently, and some of my other friends who are in ministry. And this really feels to me at certain times that when you go all out, <laughs> you're all in for God and your ministry is 24 seven, that if you're not careful, you can become like this verse. You can completely lose your flavor. You can get so burnt out on what it is that you're doing because you weren't careful about paying attention to taking care of the things you needed to take care of that you completely lose your flavor. I've sadly seen people end up leaving their ministries uh, or even leaving a church because they're just exhausted. They have been used up and spit out and now they have, have no flavor. So God, help us, help us with our, not only our discernment within our ministries, but also help us remember that if we don't take care of us, it's impossible to have a ministry where we take care of other people. There would be no banquet to have to invite the crippled and the lame and the blind and the deaf to if we weren't healthy ourselves. So today I pray God for all the people who who are all in. They have counted the cost, God, and their heart is all in it. I pray that you remind them to take time for, the, for themselves to recuperate, to breathe, to be healthy, uh, to get plenty of sleep. I pray that people will come around them and pray for them. I pray that other people in the body of Christ who are supposed to help them with their ministry step up and do what, what they've been asked to do by you. God, I just pray for their ministries that they will realize that it's you who they're being obedient to, not paper pushing or checklist or anything like that. That it is these people's hearts that you are after. And you don't want to sacrifice one of us and get one of us burnt out in order to go after the others. That's, that's not your intention. You don't want us to lose our flavor. So I do pray for these, these hearts out there, God, that are just going hard for you, that they just give everything all the time it's, it feels like uh, to you and to their ministry and to other people. And I just want to lift them up right now, God, and, and pray for strength and pray for healing for them and pray for peace and relaxation for them when those times are needed and that they take advantage of those so that they don't lose their flavor in the body of Christ. God, I just love you so much. I appreciate so much that you've asked us to rest on the Sabbath and how little we actually do that. Um, but so much of the Bible is showing us how you take such incredibly good care of us. And it is but one of a very long list of, of commands and requests that you have made of us in order that we do take care of us, care of ourselves so that we can continue through the rest of our life to go into this battle full on. Um, with everything in our heart, but not lose ourselves in the process. I just love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>